Hi, this is Kathleen from Sunny Mountain Patterns. This is the Pebble Trousers and Shorts uh, tutorial. So this is the shorts and this is the trouser version. This is the fast version, so I do not sew this fast. We're gonna align the pockets uh, inside with the front curve and then sew along that. And with the magic of video, we're gonna have it done. Ah, it's all done, see it flips open now. Get the, um, the side that's gonna show for the pockets and line it up with the right sides together. We're gonna do both sides, of course. And then sew along the curve, basically. So it's gonna look like that when you're done. I suppose you could do it the other way where sew the pocket pieces together and then sew it to the curve. I just decided to do it this way. Um, now we're gonna finish the uh, pink the edges, or if you have a serger, go ahead and search the uh, search the seam. You might also want to press and top stitch the curve for the pocket. So I'm just pinking because it's easier for me to do um, than to put it on the serger, just because there's that curve there. So that's what it looks like. We're going to press this, and then oh, there we go. I'm clipping it. I'm pressing my hand and then I'm going to top stitch both sides just so it sits nicely. So now it's top stitch. Uh, we're going to flip it over. These are the two pieces. We're going to go ahead and tack that top down and then we're going to pin the right sides together at the front to do basically the crotch and then do the back as well. So right sides together for the back and do the crotch. This is the shorts version but this works equally well for the trousers or the long pants version. So now that we've done that, we're gonna clip the crotch, and then after you do this, you can go ahead and finish the seam with a serger or with a pinking shears, if that's what you wanna do, a zigzag. So we're gonna open these up and put the front to the back, right sides together, of course, and we're gonna stitch down the side on both legs. Um, I'm not doing the inside yet because we're gonna hem the leg or add on uh, optional um, snaps on the bottom. So we're going to sew all this on both sides. Um, now we're going to, oh, <laughs> before we do that, we're going to press the waistband in half. Uh, by the way, don't do this on your um, cutting mat if you're just using a cloth diaper insert, because <laughs> I kind of wear my, my mat. So fold over a half inch on one side. That's for the tuck over when we um, when we have to flip it over to sew it onto the finish out sewing onto the pants. So it's in half and then a half inch on one side. I think here I've changed my mind on what I wanted to do, but basically this is how it's gonna. Oh, here, this is attaching the quick and dirty way of attaching uh, diaper snaps. So you know, just basically fold the bias piece in half and then pin the correct way onto um, the right side of the fabric and then you're gonna serge along it. Here is the more uh, professional looking version. So you pin to the wrong side, the right side fabric. Uh, so the snaps fabric is gonna be pinned right side to the wrong side of the, of the pants and then we're gonna flip it over fold over a half inch and then fold over finally um, over the seam and then stitch that in place. So we're enclosing the seam in this case, like that. And then you put your snaps on. So once those are two are done, you can you can pretend they're done. <laughs> you can add snaps to close it, but we're not gonna do that right now. We're going to do the waistband. So we're gonna connect the two ends of the waistband, sew along that seam allowance, open up, um, our pants that have the sides already done. And we're gonna match right sides to right side. So it might be easier for you to turn it right side out or evert it outwards. So I'm matching the, um, the seam for the waistband to the back of the, of the pants. And just going all the way around. This is the quick and dirty way, so it's completely in half. 
which if you're doing the quick and dirty way, I probably should have mentioned you don't need to do that extra half inch fold on one side. Uh, so if you have a serger, this is the quick and dirty way. So you just sew all the way around, leave uh, one inch opening at the back so you can put the, the elastic in, but just sew, sew all the way around there. Okay, so this is method two. That's what the peace sign was for, is method two, to remind myself. So match on the right sides out again, the center and front with the center of the waistband, and then the the center back with the uh, seam line. And we're gonna just do one layer and sew it. Now we're gonna flip it over. This is much more accurate, by the way. It looks much nicer. And with that fold, we're gonna fold over and pin in place. But you're gonna leave at least an inch um, gap so you can thread elastic through, which we'll get to in the next step, I think. It's, I filmed this like two weeks ago, I forgot, sorry. <laughs> I have to find time when it's quiet or else I would actually film and talk at the same time, but I have kids. So I have to wait till they're asleep. So I just pin all the way around and then just remember to do um, that sort of pin where it's uh, parallel. So you remember, or perpendicular, not parallel, perpendicular. So you remember to stop sewing or you're going to encase the whole thing. So now we're going to do the um, cuff. Well, it's not really cuff, the leg finishing. So it's just double fold up half an inch all the way around. You're going to stop uh, about an inch and a half away from both ends if you want to have a nice smooth finish when you're done. If you don't care, just do the whole thing. It's fine. So there's the pin, the parallel pin, perpendicular pin. I keep messing it too up. So if you haven't put in the snap pocket, we're gonna go finish matching up the inseams, the crotches for the front and the back, and then sewing up the inseam. You're gonna unfold that uh, double fold where you didn't sew, and then just stitch all the way around that. You might wanna finish your seams at this point. Now we have that done, we're gonna add on elastic. It's gonna be two inches larger than the half width or two inches shorter than the circumference of your child's waist. Same thing with the legs. Uh, you probably want to take the child's waist. It's more accurate. But if you don't have the kid around, this method works pretty good. It's, again, two inches shorter than um, half, or two inches longer than half the diameter. So I'm going to pin one side uh, so I don't lose the end, and then use a safety pin for the other side. I should have a tutorial out that shows a hack where you use a um, cord. You sew a cord into the casing, and then you tie it to the elastic, and you pull it through. Uh, that's my preferred method. I just do this because it's what most, most people do is all of this squishing, which is ridiculous, by the way. It's, it's a lot of squishing. Um, even at 200%, this is a 300%. This is an absurd amount of squishing. This is just for a child's outfit, by the way. This is like an 18 month old outfit. Okay, so now let's come all the way through. We're going to connect these two and then sew them, tack them down and then flip over the um, casing and sew that down so that it's enclosed. You might want to leave that a little open in case you need to make it tighter for your kid. I don't know about you, but I got skinny kids and they all got pants falling off their butts. So same thing here. Um, it's just a thinner casing, so you need a smaller uh, safety pin if you didn't use my hack of using a, a cord to tie it and pull it through. So in this case, we're not uh, necessarily connecting. Oh, we are connecting it. So we're gonna tack that down as well. And then roll up roll up the uh, cuff and sew that down. Don't lose it. Don't lose the end because you'll be mad because you're gonna have to redo the whole thing. Same thing on that side. And that is it. <laughs>